Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus is pretty much everything the iPhone XS and XS Max isn't. Even the name, iPhone XS, Galaxy S10. Coincidence? I'll let you be the judge. Yo, what up guys, Bo here. If Apple's model is less is more, then Samsung's model is big is bigger and more is, well, even more. It's a bit of a misnomer to still call these phones, especially when we seem to use the actual phone function less and less each year. I mean, these are really pocket computers that just happen to be able to make phone calls. I got my hands on the Galaxy S10 Plus and it comes in a few different flavors. Price starts at $1,000 and that's just for the base model, which will get you 128 gigs of storage. Of course, you can also pop in a micro SD card for additional storage. Should that not be enough, you can spec it out to the ceramic version that tops out with a whopping 12 gigs of RAM and a terabyte of storage. And that, my friend, will cost you dearly. $1,600 for taxes, to be exact. Yeah, 12 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage on a phone is now a thing, which is more than most average laptops. More is definitely gonna be the theme of this video. The model that I picked up is the ceramic white with only 512 gigs of storage. And the first thing you're gonna notice right away is not how thin it is, not how premium it feels, but that gorgeous display. I mean, the curved glass that wraps itself into the metal band isn't a new design, but Samsung has pretty much perfected it. The way the ceramic back and the display all blend seamlessly into the band makes it feel like a single solid device. The screen to body ratio is the highest out of any smartphones out there. It almost makes the current gen iPhone look dated. The S10 Plus is a big phone rocking a 6.4 inch AMOLED screen, but because it's tall and narrow, it felt just right even with my average size hand, unlike the iPhone XS Max. The colors are vibrant without the usual Samsung oversaturation look. Things just look super sharp, crisp, and more importantly, bright. I mean, there's really no other way to say this, but this is the best smartphone screen I have ever seen. As much as I love the tiny bezels around the screen, I do find myself accidentally activating certain features with my palm or fingertips when I grip the phone. There are a few brand new features that are completely new to the Galaxy line this year. Let's check it out. I've been using Apple's Face ID for well over a year now, and it's become almost second nature to unlock my phone that way. So going back to using a fingerprint scanner feels a bit backward, but I'm sure with time, I'll adjust. Samsung ditched the rear fingerprint scanner and implemented an industry first ultrasonic scanner beneath the screen as opposed to an optical scanner. The difference is using sound waves instead of light, which Samsung claims is more reliable since it'll still work whether your finger or the screen itself is wet, something I've always had trouble with when using Apple's Touch ID. Maybe I'm in the minority, but I'm having a pretty low success rate with the new in-display scanner. I can never seem to unlock on the first try. It seems I have to place my thumb exactly the same way each and every time or the phone will reject it. And even when the phone does unlock it, it, it doesn't have that instantaneous feel. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, the tech's really cool, but the surface is extremely small. And when the device is off, you can't see exactly where you need to place your finger. I do wish that the in-display scanner is somewhere closer to the middle of the screen since that's where my thumb naturally reaches versus the bottom of the screen where I feel like I kind of have to like contort a bit, but that's really just nitpicking. This is the first gen technology and I'm sure over time, it'll improve like Touch ID had its share of teething issues during its first year. I'm hoping to see a much bigger surface area in the future, say the entire bottom half of the screen, so it'll read your fingerprint regardless of where you rest your finger. Samsung has gone to great length to not make you notice a pill-shaped camera, so all the default wallpapers are dark in the upper right corner to conceal, you know, Wally staring at you. It personally doesn't bother me, just like I don't notice the notch on my iPhone anymore, but if I'm watching a video in full screen, it's even more noticeable than the notch because it's completely separated from the edge of the phone. Unlike the Galaxy S10, the S10 Plus has two selfie cameras. Aside from being really useful with a wide angle for single person selfies and ultra wide angle for group selfies, they're also life focus capable, meaning you can adjust the amount of bokeh or background blur, similar to iPhone's portrait mode. Although it's nice to blur out the background, it does look a bit artificial and also blurs out the outline in my head. So don't toss out your DSLR just yet. I did notice that when switching from photo to video mode, the camera did smooth out my face a bit, and this is without any effects applied. Apple did acknowledge this beauty gate effect with iPhone XS and subsequently released a fix. So I do have to say the difference here is pretty subtle. The S10 Plus can shoot 4K at up to 60 frames per second or super slow-mo at 1080p for those cinematic shots. I've always loved Google Pixel 3's simplistic approach to the single camera and its amazing software, but 
I gotta say, I'm really digging Samsung's triple camera system. I can't say I'm in love with the design, it just looks a little bit too busy for my taste. But going from ultra wide to telephoto makes this phone extremely versatile. I usually don't take a lot of ultra wide photos, but having one on me actually makes me want to be more creative. There's just a lot you can do with it, whether it's on the photo side or video side. When Google announced Night Sight on the Pixel 3 phone, it really took low light photo to the next level. The fact that it's all done in software by Google's AI is pretty mind blowing. The S10 Plus has some pretty good low light capabilities, but it just can't match Google's night sight. We can't talk about a Samsung phone without talking about Bixi. In previous generations, the shortcut button to Bixi can't be remapped to anything else. But thankfully, Samsung realized that Bixby is just not everyone's cup of tea. So in the S10, we're finally allowed to remap it to something else, although a bit limited. And there's a caveat. You can remap it to almost anything as long as it's not Google Assistant, because, you know, Samsung just ain't down with that. The S10 Plus comes with a 4100 million battery, which might sound like a lot, but Keep in mind that this is a big phone and with a high-end processor and that bright, hulking screen. So the battery is about average for a phone of the size. I've been managing about a full day of relatively heavy usage, so you can probably go for a day and a half or to two days with light to moderate usage. Samsung continues with USB Type-C, which is definitely something Apple should follow. Not only can you charge with a USB-C cable, but the usual wireless charging with a cheap charger is par for the course, which is expected for a phone in this price range. But brand new to the Galaxy line this year is it can reverse wirelessly charge other Qi enabled devices. It's off by default, but just enable in settings and you're good to go. Although it's primarily designed so you can charge the Galaxy Buds in a pinch, you can charge other wireless enabled phones like say the iPhone XS. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what Samsung had in mind when they included this feature. With the three and a half millimeter headphone jack going the way to the Dodo Birds, it's good to see Samsung still clinging on to this Lexi port, especially when its competitors have mostly excluded it to make their phones thinner and more water resistant. But only time will tell if the next version of the Galaxy is gonna hold on to this tradition. Android's come a long way since the first generation and other manufacturers like Samsung and OnePlus always had their own skin on top to either make stock Android look better or to differentiate themselves. The Galaxy S10 Plus is the 2019 smartphone to be. It's design is polished, it feels pre Premium, and its specs are all top shelf. And in my time with the phone, it didn't break a sweat at whatever I threw at it. Even with the small negatives, Samsung has come out swinging like it does every year to claim the smartphone crown. And it achieved it again this year with the flagship XS Plus. Well, that is until the Galaxy Fold comes out. So if you're looking for the most powerful Android phone and don't mind shelling out the big bucks for it, you can't go wrong with the S10 Plus. It's bigger, better, and more in just about every single way. So if you like this video and wanna see more, all you gotta do is hit that thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe and turn on notification so you'll be the first one to know when I drop a new video. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.